From Montana's News Leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, two days since the polls closed and still no confirmed winner in the race for president. As key battleground states continue to feverishly count ballots, Americans hold their breath, wondering how long this will take, who will win, and what this extended outcome could do to the country and the economy. Now, the president just minutes ago claiming voter fraud. Here's Q2's Russ Riesinger with the very latest on the vote count and where the race stands. Russ. Yeah, Janelle, as you mentioned, those votes still being counted tonight. That has tightened some of the races in a couple of those states. It will decide who wins this election. Let's take a look first at how it stands right now. Really hasn't changed any since our 10 p.m. newscast last night as far as the electoral vote count. Democrat Joe Biden with 253 compared to President Donald Trump's 213. In the states that haven't been called, Biden is ahead in Arizona and Nevada. If that should hold, he would win the election. Biden added to his lead in Nevada today, and he also picked up ground in Georgia, where President Trump leads by just a sliver. Uh, President Trump also leads in North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and he should win Alaska easily, although it still hasn't been called. Now, both of the candidates spoke this afternoon, President Trump accusing Democrats of trying to rig the election. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. If you count the votes that came in late, we're looking at them very strongly. But a lot of votes came in late. It is the will of the voters, no one, not anything else, that chooses the president of the United States of America. So each ballot must be counted. And that's what we're going to see going through now. And that's how it should be. Democracy is sometimes messy. It sometimes requires a little patience as well. But that patience has been rewarded now for more than 240 years with a system of govern governance and that's been the envy of the world. So you're probably wondering, when are we going to finally get all these votes counted? Well, Arizona still had 400,000 votes to, left to count this afternoon. Nevada still had close to 200,000, so we may not get an answer today. Pennsylvania is saying it could complete its count today, as well as Georgia. A win in either of those states would wrap it up for Biden. And, of course, there is also the possibility of legal challenges, which President Trump made quite clear this afternoon. Janelle? All right, thanks so much, Russ. Well, the stock market saw a big increase this morning, a trend expected to continue. Q2 Shaquille Kozart checked in with a local expert to get his read. After two months of uncertainty for investors, the Wall Street Journal is saying that the U.S. stock market could be on track for its sharpest weekly gains since April. I spoke with Gary Buchanan of Buchanan Capital and Billings to see just how the upcoming election could potentially affect the future of the stock market. Extremely interesting to me is how well uh, investors in the market are reacting to the uncertainty of the election. Buchanan says the Dow Jones is up 7% and the S&P 500 is up 7.3%. Now, even though not all votes have been counted yet, Buchanan says that if Republicans remain control of the Senate and Democrats remain control of the House, that could mean good things for the stock market. Divided uh, government is actually fairly good for this market. The fact that it's divided means that tax, uh, new tax uh, increases will be constrained, I think. Uh, there will be a stimulus, I think, but it's probably going to be more restrained than before. Uh, and the market in general likes that. Reporting from home in Billings, I'm Shaquille Kozart with MTN News. Now Buchanan says no matter who wins the presidential election, he, there will be changes, but he does not think they will be negative. He does mention, however, if the decision drags on for an extended period, the market will take a hit. For more information, head to KTVQ.com. Well, as of today, the state reports Montanans cast more than 608,000 votes for the election. That breaks the old record by almost 90,000 and is nearly 81% turnout. And here in Yellowstone County, voters made up nearly 85,000 of those votes. Election Administrator Brett Rutherford tells Q2 there are about 2,000 unresolved provisional ballots still to be counted. Those will be counted Monday at 3 p.m. at the courthouse and the results posted immediately. 
A Helena judge has ruled the Montana lottery cannot limit sports wagering licenses only to Montana businesses with alcoholic beverage licenses. MTN's John Riley has those details. In a new ruling, Lewis and Clark District Judge Kathy Seeley said the Montana Lottery Commission acted out of turn when imposing additional limitations beyond what was expressed in the legislation that legalized sports betting. Seeley wrote, if the legislature intended to limit sports wagering facilities in this way, the legislature could have done so. The judge added the court would not insert an additional provision that the legislature omitted. This ruling stems from a lawsuit filed on behalf of Arite Group a Billings investment group that sought a license but did not have an alcoholic beverage license. Attorney Lyndon Shivek, representing Arite Group, told MTN he was happy with the ruling and believes justice was done. In the original lawsuit, Arite Group also sought to be immediately granted a sports wagering license. However, Seeley said in her ruling they were not entitled to receive one. The group has already reapplied for a sports wagering license with the Montana Lottery. The amount of money bet in the state has doubled since the beginning of September. As of November 4th, $10 million has been legally bet in the state since Sports Bet Montana launched earlier this year. $8.9 million has been paid out to bettors, $1.3 million has gone to the gross gaming revenue, and around $556,000 has gone directly to businesses that offer sports betting. Montana Lottery told MTN the ruling was significant, and they're in the process of reviewing the decision while determining the next step. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, John. Well, now turning to Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire. The nice weather is holding on, but that could be changing in a big way come Sunday. Oh, Bob. boy, don't you know it. Let me show you what's going to happen. We got this graphic doll put up, and as you can see, today was very nice. It warm conditions on Thursday. Here we are at about 547 or so, and really not too bad. The snow still jammed up in southern Canada right now. Got a little rain over in Missoula and Kalispell. So here's the way this thing's going to come out. Then by the time Friday gets here, here's what we're looking at. Uh, Friday, about maybe 643, you'll just notice the snow is starting to make its way into the region and then later on that night it just kind of hangs around there by Saturday morning. Now all that stuff starts making its way a little bit closer to the Billings area by Saturday afternoon and by the time Sunday gets here, bam, here comes your snow moving all the way into the region. So how much snow are we talking about? Well, the computer says here in the Billings area maybe about four to six inches of snow and that's through Sunday afternoon. And then by Sunday night, Maybe all as much as six to ten inches. We'll have to wait and see if we get that much. But anyway, it looks like a significant snow event coming your way. And we'll have more about that in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, another five deaths to report across Montana today due to COVID-19 related illness. Those five victims reported in Deer Lodge, Yellowstone, Missoula, Gallatin and Silverbow counties. MTN now reports 443 total deaths. Another 1000 plus positive cases are reported today, pushing active cases to nearly 12 thousand. Well, early on during the pandemic, many businesses took out loans through the Paycheck Protection Program. Well, some owners are still struggling and paying the cash back could be a challenge. MTN's Gabby Krevit tells us how those small businesses can now apply for loan forgiveness. Around 24,000 small businesses across the state of Montana applied for a PPP loan through the SBA, injecting around $1.8 billion of capital into those businesses. Now many of those businesses are starting to apply for loan forgiveness. Across the entire state of Montana, Main Street certainly looks different now than it did in late March and early April of 2020. Many small businesses were forced to close temporarily because of the stay at home directive and have since had to adjust operations to keep in line with COVID-19 safety precautions. Congress responded by allocating hundreds of billions of dollars to support small businesses through the CARES Act, and many Montana businesses took advantage of the opportunity. The Paycheck uh, Protection Program emerged um, Basically in early April, it was part of the CARES Act and the intent was to help small businesses keep their pay, their employees on the payroll, um, keep their staff on um, throughout the COVID pandemic. Now many of those businesses are starting to apply for loan forgiveness. Businesses had to spend their funds on certain eligible costs, payroll, mortgage rent, utilities. And if they do that, the loan is, is to be forgiven. 73% of small businesses in Montana that took advantage of the PPP loan borrowed less than $50,000, meaning the process to apply for forgiveness should be more streamlined. For loan forgiveness, small businesses must work with lenders to show how they spent funds. You need to provide documentation of what you spent those funds on. So if it's payroll, 
payroll records, tax forms. If it's rent, it may be bank statements, copies of canceled checks. And if businesses did not spend their funds on eligible expenses, they would then begin repaying that loan to the lender in accordance with the terms of their loan agreement, uh, which was either a two year or five year term. Reporting in Bozeman, Gabby Crevett, MTN News. Thanks, Gabby. Well, another reminder from the Montana Highway Patrol to slow down and move over at the scene of a crash. This latest incident happened Tuesday night near Billings after two patrol cars were sw sideswiped by an oncoming vehicle. The troopers were parked on Interstate 90, partially in the right lane, investigating the crash when the oncoming car failed to slow down and hit the sides of their vehicles. Montana Highway Patrol says the troopers were not in their vehicles and no one was injured. Now, this follows the incident near Columbus on October 25th when a driver killed tow truck drivers Nick Visser and Casey Allen. Sergeant Eric Gilbert says it's not unusual and anyone who's responded to a crash has had a close call. Oh, it, it's absolutely terrifying, and and actually, you know, um, in 18 years of doing the job, I, you know, I've had the closest calls that I've had, you know, I, where I've actually felt like that I was in danger were all on traffic crashes. They weren't on traffic stops or anything like that. It was always on on a crash scene where somebody came in too fast or wasn't paying attention. Now, Gilbert stresses it's not just law enforcement, but often paramedics, fire personnel, and tow truck drivers who experience those close calls. The best thing people can do, he says, is to slow down, increase following distance, move over, and pay attention. Well, a missing endangered person advisory has been called off for a 14-year-old Custer County girl. The Montana Department of Justice says 14-year-old Serenity Wilson has been located and is safe. No other details were released. She was first reported as a runaway from Miles City yesterday, but police then thought she may have been kidnapped. Well, after using the same small space to process and store evidence since 2004, Billings Police dedicated a new facility this afternoon. Two, one. <laughs> Chief Rich St. John and Mayor Bill Cole cut the ribbon for the $3.8 million add-on at Midland Road. It increases the size of the building from 6,000 square feet to 16,000 square feet and brings some of the latest technology. Now, the chief talked about the importance of the building for investigations and prosecutions. As a department that prides itself on being professional and progressive, we found it necessary to mod modernize our evidence operation. It was necessary for security, successful prosecutions, proper processing of evidence, storage, and accountability. Bluntly, our evidence procedures for storage and handling and processing must demonstrate integrity beyond reproach. And this new facility allows us to do that. And the South Billings Urban Renewal District TIF money paid for the new building. Well, come tomorrow, Winter Holler Dentistry will hold its third annual Make a Smile Great Again event. In advance of Veterans Day, the Winter Holler crew will provide free dental care from for veterans from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow. That's Friday. Now, dentists will provide exams, cleanings, fillings, implants, and other services that the veterans may need. Last year's drive helped nearly 60 veterans. The event is not only a way to honor those who serve, but the business also raises awareness about the difficulties the veterans have qualifying for dental care. Up next on tonight's MTN 530 News right here on Q2, going green. Two marijuana initiatives were officially passed on election day, but it may take a while before Montanans can actually buy it. We'll explain.